Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of the Green Wisdom Health Show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are going to educate you today a little bit about candida or yeast. It's not just for baking. And we're going to get to the gut of the matter about it because it very much dictates what we want to eat and controls our diet choices or lack of diet choices. So, uh, Dr. Lewis, would you tell us a little bit about candida? You know, some of the things it creates. You know, we've heard that it does brain fog. You know, is that true? Joint pain and that kind of thing. So what is going on with it? Why can't we see it? And are there symptoms that we can know that we have it? You know, that's the thing you always have to consider is some of the symptoms of this condition will also be on the on list of a symptom of a, uh, some other condition. Uh, so beware that there is a lot of overlap over there. And I think the world is way, way, way uh, overpopulated in candida and other bad bacteria and viruses. And the reason is, is because in, I think it was 1974, we has in America started spraying with glyphosate and Roundup. And there's plenty of research, you know, 1974 was a long time ago, but there's plenty of research that says, well, that messes with the bacteria, the the good probiotics in your gut. Uh, Yeah, there's a lot more to that. I'll stay off the glyphosate, but, you know, that's a bad thing. And yes, I think we have overgrown. Uh, yeast, because our government, in its infinite wisdom, uh, will help out soy, corn, and wheat farmers. They should subsidize broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, apples, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They should subsidize uh, other farmers. And you know, Janet, and I just went to Ohio and Pennsylvania, and it's like, good lord, what are we doing with all that corn? I, I don't know, but. Just but, but it's not, you know, yeast, when you think of candida, you think of it as a yeast infection for, for women. Uh, it, it is in men as well. Is that is that correct? I think almost all of us have it. And, you know, me being a chiropractor, I always looked at it. Even many, many years ago, the musculoskeletal problems, you know, people would come in with muscle weakness and leg pains and, and stiffness in the neck that may not go away even after a good adjustment working on the myofascial uh, parts of it uh, slow reaction time poor memory uh, Janet you mentioned uh, brain fog well when people tell me it's brain fog I say well okay well that's real common the candida steals your thiamine or has some sort of enzyme called thiaminase that stops you from getting the thiamine or B1 in and we can put them on benfotamine which is a fat soluble butter absorbed thiamine and usually within two or three weeks people say oh my god my brain fog is lifting that's just because you're given so much thiamine that the body can actually use it and and, uh, the brain functions better and i know that's been one of my problems for these people that crave sweets and i had a guy in here yesterday sent to me you know from another doctor and he says well i used to be an athlete's athlete and i went to state and this and this and this and now i'm a 50 pound overweight piece of and he says i crave ice cream and all these other things and i said that's just the yeast you know we'll we'll get past that and then your musculoskeletal issues will go away but more importantly central nervous system issues like oh headaches or chronic sinus problems and allergies and high blood sugar and migraines and low blood sugar uh can go away uh women well not just women but genitourinary problems the yeast infections you don't always feel sometimes you get that um you know, like under the breast, because it stays a little bit more warm and moist. Uh, a lot of women will develop rashes there or under the armpits or around the groin where it stays a little bit more moist and, you know, a little bit higher temperature. Uh, hormones can adversely affect it and create a lot of these problems. And I'm saying, yeah, just getting pregnant, and especially multiple pregnancies can do that. But the stress hormones, in which most of us have high stress hormones, that's why we check on our lab the uh, cortisol. You know, and birth control pills actually can contribute to 
uh, yeast infections in, in women as well. Yeah, we've got a new line of probiotics that really is doing a kick-butt great job uh, talking about that. People that all of a sudden they get angry very suddenly, uh, people that can't sleep, we get that question, well, what do you have for sleep? It's like, well, geez, you can chase that one all over the place. It's not always easy, but it can be uh, irritated GI tract because of the excess candida slash everything else. Short-term memory. And, you know, Janet has to give me a lot of stuff just so I can think a little bit more clearly. I'm kind of a slow, methodical thinker anyway. Uh, Fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, Yeah, CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome. It does not stand for chicken fried steak. Uh, Weight gain. Uh, Even if your lab looks really, really good, Sometimes you can gain weight, and it's just because you had a round of antibiotics after you were on your rack with your Harley Davidson and have had seven surgeries on your leg. I'm talking about a lady that I just talked to, sweet, sweet lady. Can you explain that a little bit when you say antibiotics? You know, a a lot of you are familiar with um, antibiotics killing all of your good bacteria, but is there a specific strain of antibiotic that you should do once you've... um, I'm sorry, probiotic you should do once you've used a round of antibiotics, or is it just go out and grab some at the health food store type thing? Well, if you go out and grab them at the health food store, that's like just uh, grabbing the first woman you bump into and thinking she's going to make a good wife. And most of us can tell you from experience that would be a futile effort. Um, So, no, there's certain strains. And one of the things I like is called Saccharomyces boulardii. And... um, I've used it a lot. Uh, people that come out of uh, the hospital and they have a C. diff infection. And again, I don't treat conditions as a chiropractor. I just throw things in, let God sort it out. But, you know, we'll give them high doses of Saccharomyces boulardii. And their doctor scratching their head. So I don't know how you got over this C. diff thing. And it's like, well, that's, l- let me back up a little bit. We've got so many people that contact us either through email or phone calls or come in locally that are so anti-medical and it's like if you're anti-medical god has blessed you and you've never needed them those people do an incredible job so don't poo poo that you're going to need them if you don't you just blessed or stupid i don't know you should have gone i'm not anti-medical they've saved my bacon plenty of times and i've said that before so this is not an alternative Except in the context of if you take all of our supplements and you get healthier, then your body's probably not going to develop as many symptoms or diseases just because the power of God still runs in there. Because uh, sometimes you do need an antibiotic. Oh, I mean, big th- time. There's no way to get rid of something. But it does take a while to re-inoculate the gut with good bacteria, correct, once you've killed that off? Uh, you read all kinds of different things, and there's all sorts of different uh, so-called experts. I always say expert. You know, that's a tongue-in-cheek thing when I say that. They say two months to two years to get the bacteria reestablished correctly in your GI tract. And then there's other people that say you never get it reestablished. Uh, I personally think that's a little bit closer to being true more of the time. And it's not just the antibiotics, because antibiotics have saved millions of lives, but you still have antibiotics in your chicken, in your beef. You have glyphosate in your, if you're eating wheat, you're screwing yourself up. Uh, If you're eating corn, you're screwing yourself up, because they actually splice in the Bt bacteria. And the Bt is so strong that when the corn bore worm bites into a kernel of corn and explodes his insides. And you think that BT is not adversely affecting our GI tract, which, you know, you've heard of leaky gut, and that helps lead people toward uh, Epstein-Barr problems, uh, cytomegalovirus problems, chronic fatigue syndrome. And it just goes on and on and on. So I don't know that it ever gets reestablished. I take uh, probiotics almost every night, and sometimes I forget. Men are a lot less compliant. I was coming to bed last night, and Janet said, you'd get your probiotics? It's like, okay. Had to go back out and get them because she is my conscience, and she takes better care of me than I take care of myself. But probiotics, I think every day is critical. So people that aren't even taking antibiotics are still getting antibiotics through of what the cows and chickens are yep, getting. Absolutely. 
Yeah, it? it's not a good thing. That's interesting. You don't really think about that. You think, oh, they're not getting anything because you're just oblivious because you get it out of a store in a package. Um, so that would make sense that you would need probiotics every single day. Well, and then they say, well, these chickens are never raised with antibiotics. It's like, well, I don't know. They're raised with a lot of arsenic. And I know a guy that used to go pump chemicals into the water system because it irritates the GI tract and causes the chickens to fatten themselves up. And there's people that know a lot more about that than I do. But what I'm saying is I don't care how good you eat. And, and, and it's important to eat better and better and better. But there's still, you know, weaknesses in the system. So you just kind of have to, you know, build up the weaknesses through good supplements. So, you know, one of the things that uh, we give people whenever they have candida outbreaks, which really does work well, is candida support because it helps kill that back down. So when you're, you're doing the probiotics at night, when you go to bed during the day, you would kill the, the bad bugs and you need to change that up from time to time, too, right? You don't just keep it on the same thing all the time when you're killing. Is that correct? I think it's a good thing because, you know, there, there's a program called Stealth Pathogen, you know, where you're, you're going after them with this for a while, and then you change for a while. And we, we do a lot of that. We may go from candida support to olive leaf. We may go to lorisidin. Uh, uh, some people do colloidal silver, although I don't necessarily promote that except as a last resort. But sometimes there are some people say candida can cause multiple sclerosis, psoriasis, arthritis, or schizophrenia, uh, myasthenia gravis. Well, I don't really think that candida causes this. I think the condition that allows you to have a, a depleted immune system and have an overgrowth of candida and too many toxins in your body. I think that's more about, well, okay, now you've got a demyelinating disease. Uh, I just had a old patient that's been seeing me as a chiropractor for years, and he came in and says, I have myasthenia gravis. Do you know anything about it? I said, no, not really. He gets adjusted. He does much, much better. But I tell him, whatever the medical doctors tell you to do, do it. But he was inhaling welding gases for years and years and years and years. And I kept telling him, you better do something before it gets bad. But no, most of us wait until disease slaps us in the butt before we try to do something. They're the ones that's going to make it. It's not going to happen to them. Yeah, yeah. We're always the exception. And I, and I you know, I got very, very humbled uh, recently doing some lab. And Janet says, the rules apply to everybody but you. I said, absolutely right. But I got slapped right in the butt and for those of you that know we've been working on something new different as far as lab tests janet and i did have her blood drawn we'll let you know the results of that is this company as legit as they say it is because uh, i did another hair analysis uh the other day and i've done it three times a long time ago you know i'd, I'd do two samples but it was both my hair two different names and symptoms and and they one of them came back and matched 40 percent. the other one came back matched 50 percent. this last one i did it was my hair but two different envelopes and two different names both of them said i had high copper but it was an incredibly different amount so how can they take the same hair and get such incredibly different results so that's why janet and i experiment with that, we experiment with labs just to see, are you legitimate? Because anybody can tell you anything, but the proof's in the pudding. Don't tell me. Show me what's real. So we do this experimentation. That's why we got stuck 645 the other morning before coffee. Hey, so we're experimenting. But that was a good deal because she actually came out to our house instead of us having to go to a lab. And she drew it so early in the morning that I wasn't awake yet to even know what was happening and then i could have coffee immediately thereafter and she was a wonderful nurse so and i um, couldn't give her much urine so i wanted to drink a beer but they said it wasn't appropriate and an, another thing we we being janet and brandy and me did an experiment brandy went and bought a whole lot of different uh waters bottled waters and i keep forgetting about it but i'm gonna tell you these ones that say they're alkaline bull they're not the only way to make them alkaline is throw in some of our multi-minerals and then it got alkaline real quick even the ones that said it's 7.5 or 8 or 8.5 every one of them tested acid so it doesn't doesn't matter how much you're spending on the water that's not 
making the difference at all, huh? Well, you know, if it's reverse osmosis, it's cleaner in tap water, but that doesn't mean it's alkaline. What makes it alkaline is the good minerals in it. They're still putting it in plastic bottles, so that's got to have something to do with it. Just like one of our listeners actually out, uh, noticed that in front of the grocery store here <laughs> in our town when it was 101 outside that they were selling bottled water out on the sidewalk. Many pallets of these uh, water and, and she commented and said, those have been sitting there at least two weeks in the full sun, let alone the trip that it took to get them there, because you don't know how hot it was on the truck. But who wants to drink that water once it sat there with the plastic getting in it? I, you know, it's like, okay, okay. So it'd be interesting with your test with the water. But some other issues that go with uh, candida, and people don't think about, is actually oral corticosteroids people that uh, use asthma inhalants are at an increased risk of developing candida in the mouth and one way you can tell if you have candida is the coating on your tongue it actually will have a white coating there so uh, our body does give us signals that it does need some help so um, you know we we have some great probiotics that are for the mouth the probiotic synergy is is really a good one to help clean that up. So if you have to take asthma, um, corticosteroid inhalants, then you might want to consider swishing some of that around in your mouth as well. And now they've also discovered that cancer treatments are, uh, they did a study where one third of the patients being treated for cancer had invasive candida. Chemotherapy and radiation can both work to kill cancerous cells and tumors, but they can also kill off the healthy bacteria that naturally fight candida. So isn't that interesting that more and more research is coming out? It, we're knowing why we're getting all this yeast and why we're craving all this bad stuff. And, you know, it's not something that you can't control because you can at least greatly influence. And, you know, some of the things that just promote yeast growth, you know, uh, hormonal changes. Yet Janet said something about birth control pills. And here's my issues is sweets and beer. I don't drink a lot. But, you know, I had one beer the other day at the Deer Lease uh, planting uh, some you know, wheat and rye and oats and that kind of stuff. Had one beer with my friend. It's like, holy geez, it made me break out. You don't want to talk about the antibiotics we've talked about and, you know, the birth control pills. So it's so many different things, but it's the plastics, it's the pesticides, it's the heavy metals that most of us, well, we all have. It's do you have a detoxification pathway that's opened up and can get through there? And do you have an excess of nutrients so your body can actually work on that and that's why you you know one of the reasons we crave sweets is because there's about 10 times more microorganisms in our body than we have cells and i think one of the best books ever written is called 10 percent human if that don't get you off your dead butt and make you do some nutrients and some probiotics consistently nothing will you're a lost cause so read that book 10 percent human it's pretty awesome when you talk about sugar feeding yeast, that would be why type 1 or type 2 diabetics have an increased risk of candida, correct? Absolutely. Right. So, you know, right. you I know who ch- you are out there, so you're all craving yeah, bad no. stuff. You're yeah. taking your metformin and all your... All Th- that's your- not a ticket to eat like a bigger pig. And, you know, that's my issue. I'm calling myself a pig. Uh, we I created all that on our trip to pennsylvania and ohio and i think it was that pumpkin custard pie amish pumpkin custard pie that did it so i'm still fighting uh my poor diet on vacation it wasn't that bad but apparently it was too bad so well and that's why the people that have diabetes you know when they'll go they they take these these medications and then they go eat whatever and then they still have all these health conditions they don't realize uh, another big reason why you can't get rid of candida is because you have a weakened immune system, and it's more likely to develop candida. In Dr. Lewis's case, on his behalf, he does not eat that bad. Problem is, he's been bitten by a brown recluse spider three times, and uh, because of that, he has a very weak immune system. So it doesn't take much to set off bad habits yeah we don't we don't know if it was the brown recluse spider or the antibiotics that i took and i was grateful for and grateful for the surgeon but uh, my immune system's pretty toast 
So I have to always support it to be as young, rich, and good-looking as I am. So, Which is one of the reasons we do what we do. When people think, hey, y'all are all healthy. Well, there's a reason why we do what we do here, and there's a reason why we know what works and what doesn't. It's right. because we, we live it. Uh, so you guys get to reap the benefits of our pain. <laughs> uh, I do want to make sure we address these comments and questions that we had from some of our listeners. Thank you so much. And if you're wondering how you can ask a comment or leave us a, a question to bring up on, on the podcast, you can go to Shooting Straight with Dr. Lewis on Facebook, and that's S-H-O-O-T apostrophe N, because we're here in East Texas, and we like to do it the redneck way. Um, but we... Oh, that I'm hurt. sorry. People can ask questions here, and then she, we address She's high it. class because she's from Fort Worth. No, no. Just, it was just appropriately named. But Tara, who we always love, um, she shares recipes on our Facebook group. That's and, worth uh, uh, getting on Shooting Straight just to get you know, Tara's res- mm-hmm. recipes. Keto-friendly recipes. And if you'd get a look at her, you know, it's like, okay, she's practicing what she preaches. And she sends in a lot of patients. Thank you, Tara. Yes, but she is asking about MTHFR in pregnancy. And for those of you that don't know what MTHFR is, Dr. Lewis will explain that. It's called 5-methyltetrahydrofolate. And you can have that genetic SNP, correct? Yeah. Right, when you figure that out on 23andMe, which is the best way to know that. Uh, which is a genetic test. But if you have that genetic SNP, what is the deal with that in pregnancy? Is there anything someone should know? Well, there are some doctors that make their entire practice about people that have this 5-MTHFR you know, gene. Uh, SNP. SNP stands for single nucleotide polymorphism, and that all sounds really good, but I promise you genetics are way the heck above my head. Um if you have that, and some of the experts say that's 50% of us, I have one of the worst ones, a 677C gene, you have to take the synthetic form of folic acid. And you you don't want to do this by yourself because you can take too much. You can take too much folic acid, but you want the 5-MTHF form, but you've also got to pair it with a good B12 and a good B6 and somewhat B1 and B2. Uh, so, yeah, I've seen women that uh, we discovered that and we put them on the right form. And, you know, that way they can methylate and clean out their body. And then, boom, all of a sudden they're not infertile. They have babies, beautiful little babies. And not one of them's ever been named after me for some reason. But, uh, yeah, that's something you probably need to know about. Because if you have that genetic problem, you have a super high risk of uh, increased risk of miscarriages preeclampsia or birth defects in the baby interesting so thank you for that tara i'd hope that helps someone else out there and Lindsay asks have you ever covered any cbd oil topics i can tell you we covered cbd oil putting it on our website and boy did the credit card companies love us and cut us right off so Yes, we have them, and I do not sell them online because apparently it's not regulated there. So Dr. Lewis can tell you what the difference is, and he can tell you kind of what we have. You can always call here and order it, but you will not see it on our website until some of this calms down. Well, what's going to happen? Everybody's jumped on this bandwagon, and there's a lot of companies out there that's putting out crap, bad stuff. We've tried a lot of them. It's like, well, this crap don't work. Sorry. Um Okay. And some of it was poorly labeled. I thought, what are you doing? Just printing these off in your back room? Yeah, and we've tried some that work real well. We got some samples in today in the mail from this other company. Yes, they work, but what's going to happen is, since everybody's jumping in on it, uh, as soon as Big Pharma can get their greedy little hands on it, uh, you're going to see the smaller companies go by the wayside. And the reason they're, how they're going to do that is through the financial institutions. You know, If you're doing a, a massive amount, they're going to let you slide. So, yeah, get with one. It's probably a good investment if you invest correctly. I personally don't know how to invest in CBD. But, yes, it works, but you may have to experiment, kind of like women. You know, you might get one really, really good right off the bat, or you may have to shop around a little while. So just enjoy the shopping until you find a good one. Well, they seem to be everywhere, too. <laughs> uh, and You know, you have to really watch out that there's no THC in them because you'll drug test for that. Yeah, but, you know, the other thing is I saw some uh, CBD in, the, in this place, and it's like, oh, it gives you about two, where ours gives you about 20, 
you've got to watch it. And it's like some of them are way overpriced for what they deliver. Mm-hmm. Very, very good point. And it has gone down some, I think, just since it's becoming out. It's yeah, coming out more. Yeah, and there's, there's ways to get to it. You just have to call us. We're I not going to put it on the website. We've got a great pain cream, though, that works. And we have a great sleep aid that works that we that has CBD in it. But it also has a 5 milligram melatonin with it. and Some other stuff, uh, too. Some great stuff. It's, I sleep good with it. Yeah, so yeah, we, we do carry it. And we carry a very good brand. It's very reputable. So call us or you know email me whatever you want to do there uh penny has got a question about seasonal affective disorder uh, because you know we're going now into the daylight savings here in texas which we just love where it turns dark before you get off work and they uh, do that backwards for some reason and it makes you sad so um what is the best thing to do? She's asking vitamin D, light therapy, exercise. What What do you recommend to keep us from being sad during this time of year? Yes, yes, yes. And don't eat incorrectly. Like, you know, when I get emotionally upset, I go for ice cream, but which is not good. Uh, yeah, increasing your vitamin D because it makes your body think it's summertime when we get more sunlight. Uh, exercise get, really helps. We've got a great product. Again, it's another thing you can't see on our website because this company doesn't allow that to happen. But um, we do sell it here in the store. It's called Target GBX, and it's a probiotic, actually, and they're little packets of powder. And uh, you take one in the morning, and it makes you so happy. And it also helps repair leaky gut. It also helps kids that are ADD um, and they're autistic. It it uh, it is the, great. The G- GBX stands for gut brain axis, and the stuff really works. There's five or six things I can take and know for a fact it's working. That's one of them. Janet will give it to me when she thinks I'm a little bit edgy. Of course, when she's a little bit edgy, I would never give her anything because she's always sweet. Yeah, I don't. I'm never edgy. Right. Uh, it it really does work, and I. It's grandchild approved. Uh, gone from getting kicked out of daycares to getting gold star for good behavior every day on that and some good fish oil. That's true. And then Connie asked us, what is good for anxiety and panic attack? Panic attacks. She's trying to help a friend of hers. So thank you. That's good, Connie. That's good helping someone else. Yeah, you know, that's the best way to have a good life is to give to other people. And somehow God just decides to pour blessings on you from unexpected places. And I've been in trouble for mentioning God. I don't care. I'm not going to quit. So get over it. Uh, Anxiety can come from a lot of places. It can be poor probiotics and, you know, too much candida. It can be from a thyroid problem, an adrenal problem. It can be from the neurotransmitter problem. We have things that cover most of that. Easy Relax is my favorite, but sometimes 5-HTP. Uh, get your lab work. We do it so inexpensively. We do it across the nation. And, again, I still do it in the musculoskeletal. Well, if we fix this, therefore everything else your body can fix. But if you don't support your musculoskeletal system, it's not going to be able to support you so you can you know, quit moving and just be a blob in the bed. So yeah, sometimes it can be a cortisol issue too. People have yeah. panic attacks and it's good. You brought up the lab because that is also something I had a question about. Are you able to see candida or yeast issues on lab? And no, but you can suspect it. Okay. So that, uh, and we do that on the CBC. We look at that. We look at your insulin. We look at your blood sugar and the correlation between those. You can, you can pretty much tell if it's a yeast issue. And so you can lose your memory and have brain fog with candida, and that's why I forgot about cortisol. <laughs> but if, And also low iron can make you have anxiety yeah. problems as well. So, you know, you, you don't really know what it is, so make sure if you haven't had your lab tested, go to greenwisdomhealth.com, select our comprehensive panel. It includes Dr. Lewis's free consultation with that in 12 different panels of lab and it is available across the United States and fill out our health survey when you do that as well because it will actually recommend the right panel for you Um, but I wanted to make sure people that were new out there that didn't know about what you're talking about that that's what we do so we don't guess anymore and we get so many referrals and and you're trying to help people so thank you thank you thank you and then you know we have this uh, question that Kelly just you know uh, put here and Kelly sends people to me. She's from over there, close to Birmingham, Alabama. 
She says, does dairy consumption contribute to diseases? Personally, I think so. And that's, you know, when I mostly eat ice cream, it creates more candida. I think dairy is, is, you know, mostly shouldn't be consumed. You know, if you do, it should be raw. FDA says that's bad stuff, but then they think the drugs that kill 100,000 a year is okay. Um, I grew up on raw dairy out of Jersey cows. I can't believe my daddy would milk them, but he did. I think dairy's horrible for you unless it's raw or goat's milk. And, and uh, uh, Tara mentioned the – she thought my – comment on zombie uh, apocalypse was funny yeah we're we're in the middle of it so (laughs) keep doing what you're doing and we hope we've inter- we've answered your questions about many things today, including yeast and candida. And like I said, keep the questions coming. We love it. Please share our podcast with someone. Give us a thumbs up or subscribe or whatever it is you do to help uh, us get the word out to more people to help them have a life worth living. And we'll be here next week on the Green Wisdom Health Show. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope in your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.